Hello there, welcome to another celebrity makeup bag episode, researching a star whose beauty style I admire to see if we have any products in common. Emily Blunt is an incredibly versatile English actress, but her red carpet style is consistently elegant. Sophisticated, subtly defined smoky eyes, fresh skin with English rose flushed cheeks, and sometimes a statement lip. This episode is a masterclass in minimal makeup, creamy products, and a rosy, peachy colour scheme from brands that play a big part in my routine too, plus a bunch of products that are already on my wishlist. This video is kindly sponsored by Squarespace, the best place to create a website that's as chic and poised as Emily Blunt's style, or as playful and vibrant as her personality. Squarespace makes your life much easier than Emily made Andy's job at Runway Magazine, with great templates to get you up and running. I've featured lots of lovely young stars and new faces in this series before. You can find a list of previous episodes on my blog, matildaonvideo.com, where it's easy to embed YouTube videos, you just paste the URL, but you can love a fresh face of makeup at any age. I draw beauty inspiration from someone who's just turned 20 like Lola Tung or entered a new decade like Emily in her 40s and I'm somewhere in the middle. If you'd like to create your own makeup mood board and launch a blog or website you can visit squarespace.com Matilda to save 10% on your first website or domain name purchase. Now Emily and her makeup artist Jen Stryker have been working together for more than a decade. Jen describes Emily as her muse so I'm very excited to celebrate their work together. Beginning with lovely base products, what a lineup. At the Oscars this year, Emily wore one of my favourites from the past couple of years, Number One de Chanel Revitalising Foundation. Jen used this to create a fresh, dewy complexion without too much coverage. I love that it's buildable, but it can stay sheer and super light too. In October last year at the London premiere of The English, Emily was in Monica Blunder's Blunder Cover, a fantastic all-over skin fix. It's somewhere in between foundation and concealer, so it's nice to blend for quick, creamy, natural coverage that still looks like your skin. During the Wild Mountain Time press tour in late 2020, Jen Stryker used Shantakai's Future Skin Foundation, a product I've currently been trying before buying, and it's beautiful, used on the set of Euphoria as well as an undetectable skin-like base. For Oppenheimer Press in New York in July, Westman Atelier's Vital Skincare Dewy Foundation Drops created this glowy base, meant to be a hydrating, smooth skin tint with a serum-like texture and skincare ingredients. Let me know if any of you have tried it, definitely tempted. But I'm even more interested in Westman Atelier's Vital Skin Foundation Stick, worn by Emily at the Jungle Cruise premiere in LA in 2021 and the English's Can premiere in October last year. Jen says she loves the look of this creamy stick and I think I do too. This blush team might be the best yet. At the Met Gala this year, Emily's subtle flushed cheeks were from an Ilia multi-stick, one of my favourite multitasking formulas. She wore Tenderly, a washed pink, but one of my go-to shades is Dreamer, a warmer rosy brown. Fantastic dewy finish for a healthy glow. Back to the English premiere in London last October with Westman Atelier's Baby Cheeks Blush Stick in Chouchette in a starring role. Very happy to see this shade in Jen's kit. It made my 2019 favourites list and I still love this natural peach in a super smooth creamy formula. For the Paris premiere of Oppenheimer, Emily was very appropriately wearing Violette FR's Bisou Blush in Inez, a pretty soft pink. I have Louise here after the brand finally launched at Mecca in Australia last month. More to come on this marbled, matte, pinky beige blush in a video soon. For Wild Mountain Time Press in December 2020, Jen applied one of her favourite Chantecaille products, Cheek Gelée in Happy, a pink, lightweight liquid blush. This one is lively, a more vibrant, peachy orange I've had for a few years and will definitely dig out again this summer. At the Cannes premiere of The English, loved this whole look, Jen applied Sunny's Face Air Blush in Peached on Emily's cheekbones. This cream to powder, soft focus matte formula from the Philippines is about to go global. I've heard the brand will start shipping internationally very soon. Finally, a spectacular palette from Emily's Oscars and SAG Awards looks this year. Chanel's Les Quatre Rouges Iron Blush Palette in Tendresse was applied on her cheeks at the Oscars and her eyes for SAG. Multitasking smooth satin powders in this colour scheme in a giant Chanel compact really feels like a personal attack. 
a glorious glowy group with a gradient of glossy Chanel, Balma Sentiel goodness, Emily Wart sculpting, a perfect pearlescent sheen, and Rosé, a sheer pink to the SAG Awards this year, and Rosé and Transparent, completely clear due to the Oscars for a healthy iridescent glow on the cheeks and eyes. I have Ensoleillé, which is more of a peach. This texture is stunning for a no makeup makeup shimmer free sheen. In New York for Oppenheimer Press just a couple of months ago, it was Violet FR Bomb Shines Time to Shine. This universal balmy highlight stick has a warmer golden tone and very, very fine shimmer, so it can look more obvious than Chanel's balms if you're in bright light. More Chantecaille for Wild Mountain Time Press. Jen Stryker accentuated Emily's cheeks with Liquid Lumiere Illuminator in Pearl Pink Sheen. This is a liquid highlight Rosie Huntington Whiteley has worn too in this shade Luster, a pretty peach that could double as a glowy blush. In 2021 for the Jungle Cruise LA premiere, Jen used that tinted highlighter as blush trick with Westman Atelier Super Loaded Highlight in Peau de Rose. Dabbing a bit on her eyes too, I have Peau de Peche, peach as the name suggests, but it's quite a golden peach compared to luster above. Another excellent colour family for eyeshadow. For Oppenheimer Press in New York and at the Paris premiere, Emily was wearing Violet FR Year Paint in Petite Culotte. So fun to see a star wearing a buzzy product like this. Highly pigmented paints. You can see my previous review. This is a tender beige for a warm one and done wash. Then at the English premiere in Cannes last October, Emily was in Tendre Corail. Not your typical bright summer coral, it's a little more muted like a sun-drenched, sun-burnt coral. Jen Stryker said she just used a little bit of this on Emily's eyes to start, powder shadow details to come. Over to the English premiere in London, Jen used Armani Eye Tint in 24. She says she uses this shade a lot and applied it as a base all over the lid before other smokier products. Love these, but the formula and shades did change recently. Haven't tried them yet. I think Beige Matte 18 might be close to Emily's shade, but I'm still loving Soft Tan 23. At the Met Gala this year, Jen combined Ilya's eye tints in Champagne Glaze and Gold Copper Burnished. I'm sticking to the peachy theme of the video and my life with Mythic, a soft rose gold that almost looks like a light orange on my eyes when it shears out and sets like a powder. A wish list one and done shadow for me, Chantecaille Mermaid Eye Matte in Sylvie, soft brown Emily War for Wild Mountain Time Press. I've seen Sandra talk about this on her channel. It's one of her most worn everyday shadows and looks so smooth with a slight sheen. On top of the Violet FR Coral Liquid at the English premiere in Cannes, Jen layered some Makeup by Mario Master Mattes, one of her favourite palettes she uses all the time. She added some of these two and these two, very useful latte makeup mattes that were just in my Lola Tongue episode. The key to Emily's Oscars eyeshadow this year was the Chanel Le Beige palette in Tender, a pinky, rosy, reddy, cohesive colour group I've looked at lovingly every time I've gone past a Chanel counter in the past couple of years, my go-to shadow tones, and they looked beautiful with Emily's blue eyes. Two mascaras I can certainly vouch for, Emily wore Chanel Le Volume to the Oscars, the mascara I've long considered to be my all-time favourite, but I have completely finished this one, need to revisit it, obsessed with the volume this buildable formula creates, used it for years. For intense volume, Ilya's fullest volumizing mascara really makes a statement. Emily was wearing a couple of coats of this at the Met Gala this year, along with some false lashes. This does the most when you layer it, lots of lift and dramatic volume. Luxurious lip textures. Emily's Oscars look this year was a fresh pink using Chanel's Longwear Lip Pencil in Rose Naturelle. A glossy finish, that product wasn't listed, but this is such a beautiful, slightly warm rose matte, smooth enough to softly shade in all over your lips. A fantastic fiery red for the SAG Awards in February, Jen mixed two Chanel Rouge Allure Velvets, Ardente and Flamboyante to match Emily's dress. I'll be reaching for another brighter Chanel red, Rouge Chanel in the same smooth, long-lasting formula to recreate this. This peach Oppenheimer Paris premiere lip was Violet FR's Bisou Balm in Coral Guimauve with some sort of gloss on top, and I think she wore it alone to the London premiere. Emily loved this diffused, almost airbrushed matte so much, she stole it from Jen. A slightly powdery feel, but the formula has been updated. Comparison coming soon.
Last but not least, a Shantikai Lip Chic for Wild Mountain Time Press. This was the Pop of Light Peach Lily, but I have Sari Rose, a nude rose blossom I bought after asking a couple of friends what they had on their lips, and it was this. I remember buying my first tube of this sheer glossy formula about 10 years ago. Skincare finds to finish to prep Emily's skin for Violette FR makeup at the Oppenheimer Paris premiere. Jen applied Violette's Cella Cream Moisturizing Barrier Cream. This has a lightweight gel cream texture and feels nourishing, but not dewy, interestingly. More of a velvety, semi matte finish. For Met Gala skin prep this year, nothing more luxurious than Augustina Sparta. Emily had a facial with that team, and I'd be willing to bet their famous rich cream would have been included. Serious celebrity favourite with a sky high price point to match. Finished mine, so I'll wait for a sale. Nice to see an Aussie brand here. Jen Stryker shared her tips for long lasting lipstick and mentioned this lip exfoliant, Lano Lips Lemonade Scrubber Balm. The sugar crystal, gently gritty texture dissolves to leave you with a balmy feel thanks to the brand's key ingredient, lanolin. Jen also said she'd fallen in love with Tatcha's Kisu lip mask and uses it throughout the day, so she might have added this to her kit too. Tracy Ellis Ross uses it as well. I like working in a thin layer of this melted, runny, glossy texture for more nourishing, repairing results. When can I join Emily and Jen on a beauty shopping trip? Because I I think we'd get along very well. Loved discovering the details behind these looks. Let me know if you are also excited to see some products here that you have at home or similar shades or textures you'll try out to recreate her style. There's something quite thrilling about seeing someone wear something to the Oscars that I wear to the shops. Please leave your favourite Emily Blunt film in the comments too. Devil Wears Prada is one of my all time favourites, but I thought she was brilliant in Oppenheimer too. Thanks for watching. See you next time.